Welcome into another edition of the OG pod, another quick hitter uh, coming to you from the OG command center here. We are going to continue. We're going to do a part two on unsolved Philadelphia mob murders. We are piggybacking off of the Philly Prime podcast and Dave Schratweiser, who has been doing a series of interviews with retired Philadelphia Police Department crime scene unit investigator John Taggart. Taggart worked on uh, about a half dozen unsolved Philly mob murders that are um, still being investigated by authorities and the FBI still would like to at one day bring against the skinny Joey Merlino crew. Uh, although the likelihood of that, uh, in my opinion, is, is pretty low, but we're getting some new fresh insight into some of these cold case murders that span from about 99, 1999 uh, till around 2012. Um, so on our last quick hitter, we talked about uh, the first two murders that they they spoke about on Philly Prime, which was the um, murder of Long John Martirano, uh, uh who was allegedly looking to maybe make a move on Uncle Joe Legambi, who was Joey Merlino's interim boss at the time. And then Ronnie Turchi, uh, the former consigliere that was murdered back in 1999. Uh, today, uh, we're going to just give a quick... Um, some tidbits that came out of the interviews with Taggart related to the Johnny Gong's Casasanto murder, which happened on November 23rd, 2003. We're coming up on the 20th anniversary of that next month. And then the April 10th, 1999 murder of Gino Marconi, both uh, mob associates that uh, fell out of favor with the Philadelphia uh, La Cosa Nostra, the Bruno Scarfo crime family, and ended up paying with their lives. So uh, Johnny Gong's it's it's a pretty famous hit in South Philly. Was murdered in his own house um, in the days leading up to Thanksgiving '03. He had been out of prison for about a year or two. Had been a longtime romantic rival of Joey Merlino. Had fought on the opposite side of the war in the '90s. Uh, had been part of the Stampa faction that fought against the Merlino faction for power in Philly. Um, when Joey and his crew take power, uh, Johnny Gongs goes to prison. When Joey and his crew go back to prison to serve their racketeering sentences in the 2000s, Johnny Gongs comes out, come, came out in 01, and uh, there were a lot of um, reasons, kind of a confluence of circumstances that most likely um, led to the Philly mob killing Johnny Casasanto, Johnny Gongs. First was uh, the fact that he was romantic rivals of, a romantic rival of Joey Merlino. He had before Merlino married his current wife, Debbie, uh, Johnny Gongs had dated her. And then there were a lot of rumors that when Joey was in prison serving that first part of his 12-year sentence in the early 2000s, that when uh, Johnny Gongs had come out of prison, that he started romancing Debbie Merlino again and uh, had been out with her and uh, around some of the uh, Philly mob crew and, and was taunting them. Uh, there was also a talk of him uh, bragging about murders that maybe he was either involved in or maybe wasn't involved in trying to take credit for. There was the fact that uh, years before, during the, uh, during, during the power struggle of the 90s, he had shot up the house of Phil Legambi, the brother of uh, the acting boss, Uncle Joe Legambi, and uh, had almost killed Phil and Phil's young son. Um, and then, you know, Johnny Gongs was just, uh, he was a real renegade, uh, a rogue who didn't want to take orders. And it eventually ended up with him taking two in the back of the head in his own kitchen. So according to uh, Taggart and the Philly Prime podcast, I think the one thing that maybe, I think it had been out there, but now we kind of, it's out there in a more robust fashion, I guess, uh, that the investigators in that homicide had identified three suspects uh, that are allegedly all made members of the Philly Mafia that were seen on a surveillance uh, security cam at a market down the street from Johnny Gong's house on the night that Johnny Gong's was murdered. Um, and one of those people was somebody that Gong's had been in prison with and was friendly with and would have opened the door for. So 
uh, the belief from investigators is that that guy uh, came to the door, had two other guys with him. Gongs was friendly with uh, the one guy that, that knocked on the door, let him in. They turned his back to them to start uh, walking into the kitchen and, and somebody shot him twice in the back of the head. So that murder is still uh, an open case. We're coming up on the 20th anniversary. And then finishing off, uh, Gino Marconi, uh, low-level uh, Merlino crew associate, a drug dealer, bookie, and whatnot, worked out of an auto, uh, auto body shop in South Philly. He was murdered outside of his house, uh, gunned down from a rifle uh, inside a van. Um, and we learned from uh, John Taggart that this van had been laying in wait for Marconi for about three days, that the van um, started to uh, case the Marconi house from down the block. And as uh, one day turned into two days, turned into three days, the van kept on moving up the block into different parking spaces to the point where it was directly across the street from Marconi's home. The van was outfitted with... Um, like a gun turret, uh, and Marconi and his girlfriend, Patricia Miley, walked out of the house to go out for the night and were gunned down. Miley survived it. She was shot a number of times, but survived the attack. Marconi was pronounced dead at the hospital. Um, the, both the murder weapon and the van were set on fire. So you had the fire department, the police department, and the FBI all kind of... Um, coming to the scene at the same time it according to taggart the fire department getting there first disrupted the crime scene but taggart thought because they had found the gun and the uh, vehicle that they were possibly able to bring charges on this they they haven't um but uh it, it's also noted that gino marconi was had a mafia lineage his dad mark marconi and his uh his uncle funzi marconi had been made members of the uh, Bruno Scarfo crime family. So, you know, check out Philly Prime Pod. Check out um, Mob Talk Sit Down News. Uh, Dave Schratwise is doing a great job uh, deep diving these cold case murders. We'll do some uh, more reviews of Taggart's interviews uh, going forward. He's got a couple more murders to touch on, and we'll be giving you all the insight that he's giving you. So, uh, for Jimmy, we'll be back on the long form version this week. And for Benny Behind the Glass, I'm Scott Bernstein, OG Pod out. Mm -hmm.